kind of all started um, for me 2007 as a fundraising idea I had for a charity that was introduced to by my mum and sister, uh, Barristown. So one day I came home and I see my mum quite upset uh, over a child who was seriously ill who had painted a picture and I said that day I'd do something for that charity. It was just one of those moments when I walked into that kitchen and I said someday I will do it. I parked it, I kept going back to it and there was a moment in 2009 where I was going away for a weekend and I said if I take my diary I plan Cannonball, if I leave my diary behind I won't. So I took my diary and I wrote up a massive to-do list and uh, I phoned a few friends uh, to help out and I knew instantly uh, I could get 30 cars, 40 cars and we hadn't a clue what we were letting ourselves in for. It was, it was, a, it was a huge success in many ways. We had a heat wave that weekend, we pulled favours from friends and suppliers and pulled it off and we managed to pull 137. So, so it was, um, it was put, the first cannonball was organised very, very quickly. I've always called it the four C's. So you've got the cars, you've got the charity, you've got the characters, and then you've got the crack. Um, and there's very few events that bring those four elements together. And there's very few events in this country, or indeed across Europe, where the participants in the event feel like rock stars. You pay your entry fee, which includes a donation to the charity, and that gives you uh, all your meals and the hotels. Uh, but when you head off for the first time cannonballers, as we call them virgin cannonballers, when they roll into Killarney or they roll into Wexford Town or roll into Westport and there's like 15, 20,000 people waiting for you with the cameras going and the phones taking photographs and just a massive welcome. Like everybody who's done it for the first time and I ask them, well, what do you think of that? They're just completely blown away. Hey guys, it's Kamal here and we're at Cannonball 2018. It's the 10th year anniversary. We're at the starting line, about 10 minutes away from the green light. I'm outside Malahide Castle. We're gonna go meet some drivers and some guests, so follow me. Introduce us to this wonderful family. Fam yeah, family family trips. This is my, my wife, Joanne. Hello, Joanne. Hi. Um, and, and, and makeup artist. Yeah. Um, my, my daughter, Megan. Hi. And Matthew. Hi. Guys, I got a question. Is this how your dad dresses every day? No. No, no, no just for the special occasion. This morning was the first time they've, they've actually seen me in it. They saw a picture of the trial run, <laughs> and, and this morning's the first time they've seen me in it. So, so it's I the first time in the dress, it's the first time in Cannonball as well? I, I, made, I finished making this at 3.30 this morning. I was thinking the Queen of Cannonball Awards possibility. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's, a, it's an event of first. So, you know, like it's my first Cannonball. It's the, it's the first time passing the million euros to, to children's charities, and it'll be the first time that that a transvestite would pull off <laughs> the Queen of Cannonball. So. Well, we were setting the bar quite high. So, so we're going to give it a shot. Nigel, Nigel, you're looking very, very dapper. Who, who are you? <laughs> who are you today, Nigel? We're from Calvin, the ten of us up from Calvin. From Calvin, and, and yeah. who, you, who you meant? Is this your daily, oh, your daily attire? Absolutely, every yes. day. And what are, you, what are you driving now for the cannonball? Uh, BMW M4. BMW M4. Oh, I don't know now. Compared to all these Lamborghinis, where does that sit in the pile? Uh, <laughs> well done, well done. I'll tell you, on a, on a normal day, it's pretty nice. Tell me, I've got to ask you a question. How many years have you come with the cannonball? This is my fourth year. Your fourth year. Yeah. What keeps bringing you back? Uh, just uh, the fun, the enjoyment of the weekend. It's a great weekend out. Something different every year, isn't there? Yeah. The the, the cars, everything else is great. So, yeah. a colourful man, a colourful day, a colourful event. We'll see you guys later on. The first cannonball. I was trying to encourage as many people as possible to uh, dress up to inject that fun theme into it because, like, raising money for charity should be fun, you know, um, and not, um, you know, kind of pe dragging people along with you. So I knew my role was going to be liaising with the Gardaí um, and uh, so I felt that maybe 
you know, I should maybe join forces with them. And I knew then I'd have to get the cannonballers into their cars um, and get them moving from, from stop to stop. Uh, so I needed to bring a bit of authority to that, uh, maybe but in a fun way. And at the time, my brother was living in Munich um, and I was over there visiting him and I seen these uh, Polizei cars and the German policemen. Um, a character was born, so I was Jürgen. Um, and then my friend, Dan, who comes, he became Hans. Um, and we were two German police officers from a place called Heidelberg in, in Bavaria. Uh, and then I get totally into character for the whole weekend. So uh, put on the German accents and, uh, you know, well, I was in Schnell and Jawohl, Cannonballers, are you ready to roll? And the Cannonballers love it so much so that on several Cannonballs, um, when people were informed on the Sunday evening, you know, Jürgen is actually Irish from Nace County Kildare. He's not from you know, the state of Bavaria in Germany. They're actually very, very shocked and quite disappointed. Okay, hey guys, it's Kamal here and I'm at the starting line for the Cannonball 2018. It's the 10th year anniversary and it's at Malahide Castle and Gardens. The starting line is up. We were about five minutes before we go, I was gonna say go live, but get on the road. And we've got all the kids here in the background <laughs> making loads of noise. And like I said, we're gonna drop flag in about, I'd say three or four minutes. Uh, as you can see behind me, we've got the dancers coming down, photographers. We've got the Celtic warrior up behind us. It's all about to go down, but we're going to get in the cars before we go, and I'll see you guys on the road. Okay, I'm um, Jeremy Emmett, and I'm from Solihull in the West Midlands. This is a Re Resvani tank X. It's got the Hellcat engine in it. It's a 6.2 litre supercharged engine. It's got thermal night vision. It's got tack dispenser, electrified door handles. Um, it does 0 60 in about four seconds. It's uh, has 37 inch wheels uh, and, it, and it goes it goes well. They originally didn't didn't used to put the uh, the Hellcat engine in it. I watched an episode of Top Gear with the Demon, uh, so I phoned up Resvani and said, uh, "Look, you're putting the um, SRT engine in it. Can I kind of have can I have the the, the the Hellcat?" So they went away a couple of days, came back, and said, "Yeah, we can do that. Um, it, it'll be epic." Um, and um, from then on, the Tank X was born. They decided that they want to start it as a model. And uh, so they've, they've launched it at Cannonball. It is really quick. It's fast. It's, uh, it's fun. It's everything. It, it ticks all the boxes for me. It's just, just a good, fun vehicle. It's, it's not particularly quick, top speed, uh, you know, but um, that's not what this car's about. It's about the fear to the drama. Uh, just enjoying, enjoying the car, being a petrol head. Um, it's just great to do. Perfect cannonball carving. So this is my third cannonball run. Uh, the first year I did it dressed as the Hulk in an Aston Martin DBS. The second year I did it in an Aston Martin GT8 uh, with a Batman theme. And this year I've done Captain America uh, in the Resvani tank. Um, and uh, I do it. I always do kind of Marvel because I think the kids really like it. I don't try and take myself self too seriously when I do it because uh, I like I like to do it. We raise money for the kids and entertain them. And I am a big kid, <laughs> so that helps. Yeah, I mean, look at these kids. You watch their faces in a minute, it's gonna be brilliant. On the event itself, on the Irish event, the main event, we would have a team of about 70 people. 70 people are made up of, you know, from uh, the branding crew, media, uh, event organisers, hospitality. You know, there's a huge amount of support and, and help with Cannonball. So it's Team Cannonball, so always introduce yourselves as, even look at emails and that, it's always Team Cannonball, everything. There's a crew on the actual event of about 70 people and every role is as important as the next. So it involves um, meeting with councils, you know, to start planning it, um, meeting with hotels, down to picking menus, to organising road closures. There's so many different aspects of it. So we would start a little bit earlier than, so say we leave at 11 o'clock in the morning, 
we'd be gone at least an hour ahead of that to get to the next stage and um, to make sure that say for lunch that the, the setup is ready then we'd head to the venue say be the hotel make sure that room is ready that the tables are dressed that the menu is as was supposed to be make sure that there's no major roadworks that we didn't know about because sometimes something will just happen we're always trying to be a stage ahead so maybe at least an hour to two hours ahead to check that the finish line is ready but once the, the convoy then arrives in we then would head off straight away so it'd have about an hour and hour and a half there we'd head off to the next one so to make sure that the hotels are all in order for the accommodation for that night so it's typically about 260 270 bedrooms each night so we'd have at least three hotels depending on on quantity of rooms in each hotel so just make sure that they're all that the express check-in is ready that the key cards are available um, and yeah just make sure that again the function is set up again for that night that it's dressed properly etc etc it's a platform of 190 well 160 to 190,000 people that will see that convoy of cars over the weekend so if you have your um, your branding on the cars on the start and finish line you know the social media side of it and you get an opportunity to sample or to give out your product or whatever it might be, your brochures to have awareness to 190,000 people in three days. Like, as a, from a marketing budget point of view, that would cost, I don't know, I don't know a figure on it, but a lot to access that amount of people. So, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic opportunity. A friend of mine talked to me about the, there was an event on called Cannibal Ireland and there was another couple of other events. And I just thought it was a nice fit. There was a charity element to it. Um, it was something new at the time. This was the third year of Cannonball, so that was seven years ago. And I couldn't do a lot with the business at the time. There wasn't much opportunity. All I could do was try and promote it. Uh, I originally committed to do it in sponsorship first, but in the first year, it was an afterthought, and I thought, I'll go on it. And as it turns out, it was actually a great weekend. And I actually had a fabulous weekend. So much so, the following year, did a bigger sponsorship and took a, a larger car with a few friends as well. It's so hard to describe. It, it's, it, it, it's such a large event and amazing sort of elements to it. Um, as, as I said, a friend of mine said, like, I mean, uh, to go on it, it, you know, you didn't realize how good of a weekend it would be until he was actually on it. It's welcomed by so many towns around the country because of what the event brings in. And it's, it, there's a feel good factor about it. It's, it's ongoing, but it was, it was quite amazing, especially the larger towns going into the volume of crowds that would actually turn out. And even on a very wet day where you think there'd be nobody around, you can still get a large volume of people just coming out, just to see the cars coming in. And it, it is actually spectacular to see, I'm sure, for people. But from a point of view of a company, it gives us exposure. It gives us the right exposure. It gives us hands-on exposure. And it gives a type of direct exposure that you wouldn't get through normal media. We only take off our bumps like this in this car. <laughs> you <all right? laughs> Because it's the GT, the suspension is quite soft and we can ride those bumps, whereas if we were in a Lamborghini there, we would have just gone bang. So on roads like that, I could get a bit more distance on another car. <laughs> I'm Sarah Howard, I'm from Newark in Nottinghamshire in the UK and I'm driving an Aston Martin DBS Volante. I've had it remapped so it's got running at 560 brake horsepower now. Um, I've had it lowered uh, 25 mil, I've had some springs brought in from Canada. V12 power pipe put on it. Um, I did have straight through exhaust but I, with the remap I just wanted that little bit more power. Um, which she has achieved. It's also given me more noise and when I come down the gears she pops and bangs which I love, absolutely love. To be honest this is a weird car because the only aids it actually has is a stiffer suspension and the sport mode. So it's not like your modern, like the uh, McLarens and all that that have got everything. This is what amazes me with this car. I can still keep up with them yeah, and enjoy it like they are. And I haven't got any aids. Everybody's got this course mode, strada mode, whatever. That's it. <laughs> That's what this has got. Don't ask me any more technical ones. <laughs> Quite a few years ago, we saw an advert uh, on the internet. Cannonball were doing a European road trip. So we started doing it and for a couple of years, we came in a car, we did fancy dress, 
And then I thought, let's go one better. Let's dress the car up and wrap the car as well. So for two or three years, I was saying to my other half, we need to wrap a pink, we need to do something pink. He's going, I'm not driving around in a pink car for two years. He was like, no way. Then he said, let's do it. So we wrapped a pink and we had so much fun in her. But the next year we took her back, we wrapped her white and we didn't get the same. The crowds weren't like, oh, where's the pink car? We couldn't see the pink car. And ever since that day, I've kept a pink. Everything about this car is centered on the capital. Everything, the color, the stickers I keep on all year round. I do track days with all the stickers on. I have people asking about it. We, we've actually had so many of our friends who we've spoken about it join the cannonball as well. So it's such a great thing to bring everybody together. The cannonball, it feels amazing. It, it feels like you do, you've never known anything like it. You're going to a town, there's 20,000 people there to see all the cars. You, you wouldn't get that in the UK. You wouldn't get that at all. Um, and like you get the, the, old, the old ladies, the old ladies like in the middle of nowhere and they're sat on a brick wall and you feel that they've come out to see you. At least you can do is pat and wave and they get so happy. Um, I love the, the work they do for the charity is unbelievable. There's one uh, in the UK and it is for children with terminal diseases and I went two years ago and a, a young gentleman came out who's about 16 with terminal cancer and of all the cars in the car park the Lamborghinis, Ferraris he said can I come and sit in this and it was pink at the time and he sat in it and he said would you take me for a drive and the nurses said no no we don't do that you can't do that and in the end they said yes so I took him out on the road and um, we're driving and I am useless at directions and turn me round I'm hopeless and we went down the road, turned round, and I couldn't remember how to get back. And we kept driving down this road, so I turned round, drove back again, and I ended up ringing somebody, and this lad that had sat there in silence all the time said to me, you go down there and turn left. And I said to him, you know where we're going? He said, yeah, but I was enjoying it so much. And when I went back the next year, he had passed away, sadly, and that really affected me. Yeah, that was quite sad. That moment when I was introduced to Barrettstown, there was something in me that said I wanted to do something. I had a personal goal back then to raise a million. The awareness I wanted to raise for the charities was equally as important. And I knew that if you see a red Ferrari driving down a local town or a village, you'll turn and you'll look. So you put graphics on that and branding on that and then suddenly there's a lot of attention on that car. So the awareness is equally as important as the money that we've raised for the charity. So over the years we've done it for Barrettstown, uh, Laura Lynn, uh, Make-A-Wish, Pieta House, uh, and recently Chile. If you can imagine 350,000 calls a year, of which we can answer about 80% of them, the more volunteers we have, the more we can answer. Uh, and more kids are going online as well, so there's, there's about 30,000 active chats online in addition to the phone calls. Kids ring for all sorts of reasons. Um, children just ring just to have a chat, because they feel they can't talk to their siblings, they may not talk to their parents or friends. They just ring for a chat to talk about any issues. Those issues could be, I don't like the, the, the communion dress my mother's buying me, to I'm, exper I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing some issues of bullying in school, and then some really serious issues around sexual abuse, uh, domestic violence. So the whole basis around this type of service is that where it's non-judgmental. We're not a counselling service, so the whole control is within the child. They decide what they want to talk about. And, and really what it's doing is it's building resilience in young children. So that when they go out of school or they go into college or whatever life they do, they've learned to cope with a lot of life's difficulties. Um, so we, we, we get about a thousand calls a day. I suppose just to put the importance of fundraising for Childline in perspective and the part Cannonball plays, so we're now able to train um, volunteers and supervisors to keep Childline open between the hours of 10 and 4. So 
The cannonball and the people behind that raising 45 to 50,000 euros means that we can keep that open. Traditionally, we would always do it for a, a children's charity. Um, we get inundated uh, with uh, emails throughout the year from various charities. And we have, a f you know, we have a few charities in mind that I personally want to see through. My personal goal was a million. This year we've raised a, a slightly, a bit over, I think 1.06 million. So, um, you know, that's a substantial amount of money in 10 years. So the fit for us it has to be really a, a children's charity. We tend to find out a bit about the charity before we partner with them. I'm a numbers person, so I like to know that if we raise 100,000, that that's going to grant, you know, 25 wishes or 20 wishes. So I suppose there's 25 children, uh, you know, who've got a wish granted. Um, Maybe there's, you know, a um, hundred children who got counselling because of some of the money we raised in another year. Uh, I got involved in the charity end of it then. Uh, we were, I think it was the second or the third year we were doing for Barristan. And I was watching the, the, their volunteers collecting. And they were volunteers, but they weren't very good at, they weren't getting a lot of money. So they were sort of just walking past and shaking the bucket, but they weren't making any eye contact. So I got a couple to the one side and sort of talked to them and then I went with them. And the first year they lifted something like three or four thousand and that year they lifted over ten thousand. So that's how I got involved. Uh, and now I sort of, with myself and Emily Barn and Mickey Gleason, uh, we're the three that have been there from, from it started. And um, we do very well. We've lifted a lot of money for charity, but we have a great team with us. We have about 10 collectors, and they're absolutely brilliant. Every charity that we've done it from, uh, you know, and, the, and there's been many, there's been Laura Lane, and there's been Make-A-Wish, and there's, you know, a number of different ones. You know, when we get to talk to the, the, the chair people of these, society, the, these charities, you, you, you get to watch a video of, of what they're doing, so it brings you back to reality. So not only are we going around the country having fun and having great crack, you understand that some of your money that you, you put into it is going to great causes. And that in itself makes you feel even better because people come out and see you and you see the people throwing money into the buckets and you're like, like I actually can see that that's changing lives because we get to talk to the chair people of these societies and we, we get to watch the videos about how it affects people and, 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 and the good causes that we're going to do. So when you're involved with something like that, you realise that you are, playing, you are making a difference. You, you, you know, you, you donate two and a half thousand for, for, for one of the sponsor prizes or whatever, and, and you know what it's buying, you know where it's going. And it, so it really makes a difference. So all of us are involved in that. And anybody who competes in Cannonball and, and, and goes along in Cannonball knows that, you know, it, you're changing lives. And what I love about it, the, the drivers of these cars, they're not the type of people, you know, don't touch my car. You know, they, they open the cars, the children hop in, get photographs taken. There's no, you know, they're, they're just a lovely bunch of lads. They leave their hair down for the weekend and they, and they love it. And you meet some uh, people on the way, like, uh, for example, down in Ballymaloo, uh, we, come, we came out from lunch and there was a man and a husband, man and his wife, or a man and partner, whatever, uh, there standing beside one of the cars, or a red Ferrari that it happened to be. And so I said to him, you'll get the young fella. The young fella was sort of very badly physically handicapped uh, and sort of shaken. And so I said to him and he said, uh, the, the mother said, he doesn't show any feelings, there's no point. So then the driver of the car and the photographer happened to come up. So he opened the car and uh, I said it again. So the father lifted the child, sort of, he was strapped in with about three straps. And so he threw him over his shoulder, like type of thing, and he got him into the car and uh, they, they, they put his hands up on the steering wheel and the young fella smiled. So that was just a nice part of the, of the thing. So loads of little stories like that along the way, which, which was nice, like, you know what I mean, like, you know. If kids were to experience Cannonball, I mean, if they were coming out and they watch it, if I was to put my mind as a kid, I just think of adventure, dreams, uh, you know, excitement and, and you know, the possibilities, you know, we are all kids at one stage and you all see these cars, you all see these characters. And for a lot of these kids that see Superman or, or, or they see Captain America and they see them in the vehicles, 
or they see Batman and he's driving a, you know, a car the sun out as Batman and stuff. It's, you're, you're alighting images in their head that they'll take away with them for years. And we see it every day over the three days. We're seeing kids waving at us and their, their faces are lighting up. They see the Incredible Hulk, they see Superman, they see Wonder Woman, they see Batwoman and they see all these people. So, you know, if I say to any kids, come out, I'd say to the parents, bring your kids out because, you know, it's very, very few times in life that you'll see 180 supercars with everybody waving, everybody participating, cars stopping, letting the kids sit involved. It's one of the greatest experiences. I brought my own kids down and, you know, they know me as Officer Flash, they know me, but they've never seen it and they, they were alive. They, they met the Mario Brothers. And, you know, man, for all their intense purpose, they were in a video game with them. You know, change the weekend, it's brilliant. You know, there's very few events where you're going to have the Hulk and you're going to have Captain America and Batman and Robin and, uh, you know, Saturday so say some, of course, we have the, the usual nuns and priests. And this year we had the Pope um, who stole the show, literally, um, in his Pope mobile. Um, and when people see that, it just brings out such uh, joy, particularly for children. Um, and, um, and of course, that ties in very nicely with the, with, the, with the charities because we tend to focus on children's charities. So basically, it's like big kids doing things for little kids. Hey guys, it's Kamal here and we're in Wexford Town on the Keys. We're on the finish line. It's been a crazy three days. We have broken the million euro mark. We've got 180 super, super cars coming down here. There's thousands of people around. The energy is electric. The atmosphere is amazing. If you like cars, you do not want to go anywhere. We're going to see you very soon. I suppose Cannonball is 10 years old now and there's a good foundation there. There's an awful lot of loyal support. I'd love to see it going for another 10 years. Uh, the Irish event, there's something magical about it. There's something, you know, there's an, there's an energy about it that it's very hard to explain until you experience it. Well, okay, so after 2009, right, September 2009 was the first Cannonball. And as soon as that weekend was over, from that moment to this moment, all I think about is Cannonball. It, it, it gets into your psyche, so it grew from two days to three days, and it's every September. So it just, it, it just, it's something that you look forward to, and you, you can't stop it. When you finish Cannonball, you're, you're on a high for a month, you're on a high for two months, and then you settle down Christmas, and then January rolls around, February, people start talking, and then the hype just starts to lift, and before you know it, it's September again. So it's, it's one of those things that just gets in on you, and you just can't get away from it. You build friends, you build real close friendships and you, when you meet people that you haven't seen in a year but you've done, I've only seen some people you know 10 times in my life and they've only been on Cannonball but when I see them I feel man I'm in front of it it's just it's amazing it's, it's great. Everyone just loves the event and it makes me feel really good uh, not only seeing all these amazing cars and meeting great new people building new friendships uh, but also seeing that all the money that they contribute is going to a fantastic charity um, and just, you know, people just walking on air uh, for the three days. Uh, and the worst thing about Cannonball is the Monday uh, after the event because we're all extremely depressed. Um, and it's kind of weird when you're driving home and you're beating your car and you're waving at all these people on the street and they're saying, what's going on? Because that's what you've been doing all weekend. And it's very hard to get out of that habit of waving at everybody while you're driving along. So, so like, the Cannonball really stands for a lot. Um, and until you've actually done it, it's very hard for people to understand how fantastic it is.